I'm all good. Yeah, let's go. So, Sir John, uh, <laughs> great to have you here. Nice um, to be here. I laugh when you call me Sir John because it feels, you know, like when you're naughty. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. They just call me JK, yeah. yeah. When you look back at your time, how, first of all, how difficult was it for you to, to talk about it? And, you know, are you very proud of the way things are now and how, how it's changed? Yeah, so, um, you know, I wanted to jump out of a window one night. Um, I started having anxiety attacks. I didn't know what they were. You know, my reference to mental health was one throw of the cuckoo's nest, right? So I thought if I spoke to anyone, I'm going to be locked up with Jack Nicholson and, and Chief, the big American Indian guy. So, you know, that was um, something that wasn't talked about, and I didn't know what it was, so I thought I was going insane. So I hit it and started with anxiety attacks, um, and then led into more and more anxiety attacks, and then also with suicidal ruminations. So thinking about suicide and just battling this thing in my head, and I didn't talk to anyone really for five years. Um, until I wanted to jump out of a window one night and on an all-black tour. Um, and I was very fortunate that the guy lying next to me said, JK, you've got a good heart. So I didn't jump out the window. Um, and that was sort of a turning point for me to actually reach out and get help. And I, and I went to see, um, I wait, waited till I got home. I played a test match the next day, scored, scored two tries, but it was irrelevant. It was like living in a dream. Um, anyway, I got home and I reached out and I went to my doctor, who was the all-black doctor. We'd been on tour for five weeks and <laughs> didn't talk to him. And the first thing he said to me is, um, JK, it's an illness, not a weakness. And I thought, what? Because the illness takes away your self-esteem, takes away your self-confidence, and takes away enjoyment in life. Life's pretty shitty without those three things, you know? Um, so it sort of dawned on me that if it's an illness, I can, I can do something about it. So... Um, it, w it was a rocky road though, you know, like the doctor said to me, you know, you need to take antidepressants and you need to go and see a psychiatrist or psychologist. And I said, piss off, I'm not going to, you know, here's the same guy that's spending two hours in the gym every day, you know, going to the physio if I've got a sore leg, massage, shit, I love to massage, I'll be the first one on the massage table, you know, trying to be the best athlete I could, but I wouldn't do anything about my head. Um, so while I was sort of still fighting it, I wouldn't do any of these things. And I didn't get much better over the month besides having an understanding. So some of the, pain, some of the mental pain reduced a wee bit because I thought, oh, I'm not alone and I'd spoken to someone about it and I was starting to get some help. But then after five weeks, I, I decided that I needed to, you know, really take this illness seriously. So I went into antidepressants. Um, you know, I went, I went and saw someone, that's a bit of a long story, probably... You know, I, I went and saw a couple of people actually, first two were really bad for me, you know, those d didn't connect. Third person saved my life. And so I went on this journey of, of understanding me and um, learning about mental health and learning about what I need to do every single day to make sure that I look after me. Like, when, if you think about sport, let's put it in the, in, in the sport context. You know, when I first went to see the psychiatrist, um, she said to me, what would you do if you had a tight hamstring? I said I'd stop and stretch it. What would you do if you got back up and you ran really hard and it got really, really tight? I'd stop, I'd ice it, and I'd go to the physio, right? What do we do with our head? We don't talk to people, we hide it. We try and solve it ourselves, we don't get any help. And so once I said, oh shit, I've got a tight hamstring in the head, what's the ice and who's the physio, was when I started really embracing it, you know? And I used to get pissed, man. I used to get absolutely hammered because that's how I got brought up. Um, and that wasn't the ice, you know? It'd give me some relief, and then I'd go back at 100 miles an hour the next day. So I knew that wasn't the ice. Um, and I wanted to make sure that, how do I actually treat the head like I do the rest of my body? How do I keep it in shape? How do I look after it? How do I do the preventative stuff? I mean, you're probably a little bit younger than me, but you know, our days would have a fag and a beer after the game. Now they've got all those socks they put on, you know? Um, so the game's come a long way, hasn't it? From a, from a physical point of view, you know, ice baths, all that sort of stuff. It, but we've got to treat the, the head the same. You can't run out in a stadium like this for 40,000 people um, and your job relies on it and not suffer from some sort of mental anguish or stress or pressure. And I always remember talking to an old rugby player and he said, the bloody hell those young fellas stay down when they get injured all the time. It's because their life, 
you know, the first thing you think about is shit, is my, is my career over, you know? So, um, so there's lots of things where we need to bring the head space up to speed with, with where we are. I just want it to be normal. And I think that, you know, there's still a bit of stigma around it. People are too scared to talk about it because they see it as a weakness. It's not a weakness, it's part of everyone's life. Um, I think it's really, really important to treat, you know, your own health like I spoke to the world about it, but it's okay also to keep it private as long as you've got a group of people who you trust around you. And that has to go into your sports club or even the workplace. You know, I think that the, the, the world, you know, you get more inputs in your brain today than your grandparents had in a lifetime. You know, we've now got the cell phone. We've got, you know, we're just so connected all the time. So we've actually got to take control of actually relaxing our brain. You know, our parents used to drive home on a on a Friday night and they'd have the weekend off, you know? How many times you, you, you know, you're catching up with emails after dinner or working on Sunday or, or connecting with people. So, and that's okay, I'm not criticizing that, but we've got to make time for our brains. You know, when was the last time you were bored, right? Because when you get bored now, you pick up the phone or because you, your brain's used to going. So, so we just need to have these tools and techniques. You multiply that by being in a, in a public arena then if you don't look after your mental health, you're not going to be performing at your best. And so the preventative side, what am I doing to deal with the, you know, to deal with the stress and pressures of, of sport? What am I doing to deal with my future that's going to be over when I'm 30? You know, so there's all those things we need to take into account.